So let's take a look at how we could use um, what we know about x and y velocities and projectile motion to solve a problem that involves an angled launch. So here we're going to consider this guy named Kenny Powers and an audacious stunt that he attempted back in the 1970s and use this as an example for our projectile problem. So check it out. In 1976, Morrisburg, Canada was the site of the greatest car stunt ever performed. This event was known as the Super Jump. Stuntman Kenny Powers would attempt the longest car jump in history. His goal was to jump the St. Lawrence River. The distance would be one mile. An eight and a half story ramp was constructed for his rocket powered Lincoln Continental. Once the car would leave this ramp, it would sail one mile over the river and land on Ogden Island in the state of New York. This jump had been in the planning for over four years. Over one million dollars had been spent and 110,000 yards of dirt had been moved to construct this special runway. Kenny Powers would be jumping three times the distance Evil Knievel had tried to achieve during his jump at Snake River Canyon. Powers' car would reach a takeoff speed of 280 miles an hour. Within seconds, he would reach an altitude of 300 feet. His body would undergo a force of over 30 Gs. This jump had been attempted four times previously and had to be canceled. This time, Kenny Powers knew there was no turning back. Powers said his final prayers. His self-confidence was high. Any self-doubt or hesitation could cost him his life. A helicopter roamed the sky while power speedboats and divers waited on the other side of the river in case of a disaster. As the final seconds ticked away, Power's young wife became anxious. Would this be the last stunt he would ever perform? Yeah, I know that's pretty mean to stop you right like that, but let's go ahead and crunch the numbers using the physics to see if this is uh, plausible, if this should even work out. So if we consider the situation, um, we're told that he's trying to jump one mile across the river on this really tall ramp. Remember in the video it said he was going 280 miles per hour. And it doesn't tell us exactly what the launch angle of the ramp is, but we might assume something close to 45 degrees if we're assuming he wants to go as far as he possibly can. We know he's going to arc through the air in the shape of a parabola. And uh, if all goes well for Kenny, he'll land on the other side uh, in the state of New York. However, um, we don't really know how he plans to land, so maybe we'll make an assumption that he has a landing ramp. If you ever watched uh, cars or motorcycles jumping, a lot of times they would do something like this. So we'll take a stab at that. Um, how do we do this? How can we solve a problem? Can we figure out if he's going to make it in this case? Well, first of all, I'm going to take this problem and convert the English units to metric. So this would be given in a problem you'd have to solve. So instead of 280 miles per hour, we'll go with 125 meters per second and the 1610 meters instead of a mile. I need to um, remember the two things that need to be added to every drawing that I create. I need to define my positive direction, both x and y, and I need to pick my zero coordinate. So I'm going to start the car off at zero, zero. I'm going to call positive x and y up and to the right. Um, since this is a question of whether he makes it ultimately a horizontal question, I'm going to look at the x or the horizontal direction in order to try to answer this. I'm going to look at only my knowns in the x direction. He starts at an x coordinate of zero, and I'm interested in where his final x coordinate is. I don't know that it's going to be one mile or 16, 10 meters. So we need to figure out whether it's going to be that more or less. Um, so x is unknown. His velocity in the x direction, I'm not given. I know he's launched at 125 meters per second, but only a piece or a component of that is in the x direction. So remember, we're using cosine for x. So we'll multiply 125 by the cosine of 45, and we'll find his launch velocity to be 88.4 meters per second horizontally. No acceleration in the x direction. He'll keep that velocity the entire time, assuming minimal or no air resistance. And the time of flight, we don't know. So again, x is the variable we're trying to solve for. So we go to my equation card. And the only equation or relationship we'll ever have in the x direction, 
um, x equals x naught plus vxt. And we plug our numbers in, and we find that we're stuck. We don't know how much time he spends in the air, and that's the missing piece to figuring out the answer to this question. So we go to the y direction, and this will be our general strategy in problem solving. We'll have to use both directions to help us solve the problem. And we list our knowns out in the y direction. Now, the beginning and ending y coordinate are both zero. He begins and ends at the same level. Um, his y launch velocity is a component or a piece of that 125 meters per second. So multiply 125 by the sine, because we're dealing with the y direction now of 45 degrees. And we get 88.4. Now the reason we get the same answer as the x is because 45 perfectly or evenly splits the x and y. We don't know his ending y velocity, but we do know his y acceleration will be that of gravity. So unlike the x direction where there's no acceleration, gravity will be accelerating him at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're not sure the amount of time. Now we're going to use the y direction to find his time in the air and then use that back in the x direction to figure out if he makes it far enough. So I look at my list of equations. I don't know ending velocity, so I'll pick the equation that doesn't have ending velocity in it. We substitute the values that we have, and I get an equation that has the t and the t squared is unknown. I've got to solve this for t. So I'll simplify this a little bit. I'll subtract the negative, uh, or subtract the 88.4t term to the other side. And if I divide both sides by negative t, one of the t's cancels out. I don't actually have to solve a quadratic. I can just directly solve this uh, for t. And when I do, we get a whopping 18 seconds. Talk about a lot of time to spend flying through the air in a car. Not sure how good I feel about his chances here. But I'm going to take that time of 18 seconds, and I'm going to bring it back over to my x direction, because whatever time he's traveling vertically is also the same time he's traveling horizontally. And now we can figure out at least in an idealized air resistanceless case, how far he should go. And, uh-oh, <laughs> we're not close enough, are we? Even with no air resistance, it seems like he's going to be falling short. Now, one would imagine that somebody would have checked over these calculations before his stunt, even if it was just uh, his high school physics teach, you know, high school physics taking son or daughter. But it uh, doesn't seem like that happened. And let's take a look and see what happened to Kenny in the end. was unsuccessful. As rescuers reached the car, Powers was freeing himself from the special harness. But nobody knew the extent of his injuries. His car disintegrated in midair and landed in the river. His wife and the crowd waited anxiously for news. Powers was lucky. He had broken his back. This was nothing new, for he had suffered the same injury seven times before. As he was carried to the ambulance in a state of semi-consciousness, all that he kept asking was, did I make it? Is everybody pleased? As the ambulance rushed off to the hospital, all that remained of this one million dollar attempt with the remains of a yellow rocket-powered Continental floating aimlessly on the banks of the St. Lawrence River.